What's up, y'all? Just want to say thank you for asking me so many questions in the comment box earlier. So probably about three, four days, I'll say three or four days ago, I, you know, put in my YouTube um, community tab, hey, ask me some questions. It could be about anything. I'm going to answer all of the questions that you all asked. So y'all asked some great questions. So we're just going to get into some of those questions right now. So let's see here. Let me pull it up. Um, we have a total of 18 questions. So first question, well, that's not a question. That's more so of a statement. First question, what's the hardest decision you've ever had to make so far? The hardest decision I've ever had to make so far would be, ah, that's hard. Probably my decision to get divorced at an early age. I think that was a hard decision on me. Um, just because, you know, like when you think that you're supposed to be with somebody forever and you have to make that decision to leave. I think that's a that's a tough decision, especially being 26 years old at the time. I mean, I didn't know anything about divorce, barely knew anything about marriage. And, you know, it, it just was a tough decision. Also, another tough decision for me was um, moving, moving to Atlanta because Atlanta wasn't the first city on my list. I wanted to move to Charlotte and then the opportunity came for me to move to Atlanta. So I was like, I don't have any other opportunities at the moment. Let me move to Atlanta. So I would say those would be the two decisions that really was tough for me. Next question. Do you believe the Sony ZV-1 is still a good camera to start with? How do you feel about the quality? That's a great question. I think the Sony ZV-1 is a great camera to start off with. Does good photos, does great video, compact, portable. But I will also say it depends on what your setup is. If you're looking to be more so of a vlogger, do a couple of sit down videos, I would say the Sony ZV-1 is a great camera. If you're just going to set up in a studio or just do a talking head video or things like that, I think you could probably do better with like a Canon R50 or a Canon R8 or something like that. Um, or a Sony ZV-E10. still actually have mine and I still use it from time to time. Um, but I'm right now I'd be using the, um, at least for vlogging, I'd be using the Osmo Pocket 3 and that thing is fire. Actually what you're watching me on on this angle is the Osmo Pocket 3 and this thing is quality. Hey Corey, I love your content. Any tips for inspiring YouTubers, how to get started? From my perspective, I would say finding gear that you enjoy using, um, also being consistent and also not breaking the bank in order to get into content creation. Use your phone, purchase a cheaper camera, a smaller camera, Sony ZV-1 like I mentioned, Canon R50, Canon M50. Cameras like that will help you out um, because the quality is a little bit better than your phone, but honestly, iPhones these days are doing great, but also picking a niche I think this is where I messed up before is, you know, I had a particular area if y'all watched me early on and I switched and then I kind of try to find my way into like what content I enjoy creating on an everyday basis and that can help slow down your growth. So I would say picking a niche and sticking with it as much as possible will help as well. And then also just doing research, researching other creators, other YouTubers, people that are making content in the area that you wanna create content and see how you can come to the platform different. Um, and that, that, that should help you out. Next question, would you do the getaway cabin in the woods again? Yes, I would do it in the woods again. That's probably one of the most peaceful experiences ever um, if you just want to go somewhere chill out don't have to worry about the busy scaries of the world disconnect silence like relaxing I would always say getaway cabin is the best route man I, I love my experience out there I've been to three now I think three yeah I've been to three I believe two or three but Great, great experience. So I would do it again. Okay, this is a suggestion. Someone said suggestion. Workday vlogs, your morning routine to your day at work, anything in between, back home, night routine. Question, what are your plans to get out of this slow growth? Subscription slash views on YouTube. Also, you had good views in your earlier days. What contributed to your downward spiral? Ooh, tough question. But also, I'm gonna be honest with you all too. Kind of like what I stated earlier. If you've been following me for a while, you know I started my channel making fraternity and sorority life advice videos. 
I decided to pivot out of that because I was like, you know, this is not an area that I'm going to be able to maintain, keep up, you know, get brand deals, grow as a content creator. So a good bit of my subscribers, I would say at least 20,000 of my subscribers probably came from that niche. Then when I switched, I switched to more so of lifestyle, simplistic living, self-development, vlogs and things of that nature. Um, so I'm still kind of gaining my footing for you know those people in that audience so with that being said like my views kind of took a hit because a good bit of my subscribers came from a particular niche and now i'm you know in a new area another thing is my divorce video actually skyrocketed my channel as well so before i did the divorce video i think i had about maybe 25,000, 30,000 subscribers and then when I dropped that video, you know, other content creators made positive and negative videos about it. People shared it like it got a lot of views because anytime you talk about something like that, people knows you want to know what's going on. So it's close to a million views now. And that brought a whole bunch of people to my channel. So that video made people subscribe thinking that I probably would do like a series of videos about the divorce and go into details and get messy about it. But honestly, I just dropped that one video. So the people that did subscribe for that video and wanted to hear more is probably still subscribed to and that, you know, take a hit on my views as well. So I feel like the algorithm is having a hard time finding the people that you know, are looking for my content because one is still bringing in traffic from my Greek videos. Second is bringing in traffic from that divorce video. And two of those audiences are two different audiences from what my main purpose of my channel is about. So that's currently what's going on with my channel. And what I'm going to do to get out of it, honestly, you know, I can just continue to create and continue to do me and hope that the right people will find my channel and people like you all will continue to watch and share it for people to come and see the greatness that's going on here. But um, honestly, it's, it's not much I can do but continue to create quality content and hope for the best. Good, good, good question though. Good question. This is another great question. What does the next chapter in your life look like? Hold on, no, I read that wrong, I'm sorry. What does the next chapter in life look like is, okay, what does the next chapter in life look like? Is Google the future for you or what are your aspirations career-wise and personally? Additionally, you're very intriguing and have many layers to you and I feel your YouTube channel could be big, big. Oh yeah, what was your reaction to content creators making videos about your divorce video? Okay, so a lot of questions in one, but I appreciate you for, you know, saying that my channel is intriguing. I appreciate that. And the next chapter in life for me, honestly, I'm in a season where I'm just continuing to grow. I'm kind of in a place where I feel great about my life. I feel great about the things that I have, what I've been able to accomplish. So now I'm just riding a wave, you know. Um, next, as far as like my career with Google, I'm trying to pivot out of the recruiting, the tech recruiting space and pivot into more so like working with YouTube at Google or, you know, working in marketing or working in branding and things of that nature. So that's what I'm trying to do. I want to eventually pivot, um, you know, so I'm trying to get all my ducks in a row so I can make a pivot eventually, hopefully within the next year or two. And to your next question, what was my reaction to content creators making videos about my divorce? Honestly, my reaction was, you know, I'm chill about it. You know, I know I knew that people would make reaction videos. I knew that people would jump to conclusion. I knew that people would have their own, you know, opinion on it. And, you know, that's why I dropped it. I dropped it for two reasons, because people need to hear it, need to get it off my chest. You don't hear many men talking about these stories. So I felt like it would be great for a young black male to talk about his experience getting divorced, what happened um, without being messy. So that was the goal too. I wanted people to chime in and give their opinion and give their thoughts and things of that nature too. So it worked, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad that people made videos, but the negative ones, uh, it don't really affect me because they don't really know, you know, who I am and the person I am and what happened. You know what I'm saying? I think people making negative videos and commentary about it are people that strive to be looked at as these, you know, highly masculine figures that can't do no wrong and can't make mistakes and never loved a woman before. Like, I feel like people making those negative reviews aren't the true 
men that's out there in society. I feel like I handled the situation the best way that I could. I feel like, you know, looking back on it, I made some mistakes, you know, I, I said that in the video, but I'm also happy that that experience allowed me to grow as a man, become a better man, become a better person in general. Um, so yeah, I, I don't have any negative feelings about anyone who made a video about my divorce video, negative or positive, they all helped me out at the end of the day. Okay, next question. I saw in two videos back that you met up with two beginning photographers and gave them some tips. Is it something that you would be willing to do with a follower in the ATO area? Um, I don't know. I, I typically offer those to people that I know that I'm cool with, whether it's coworkers, friends, people that I'm introduced to that I got a good gauge for. But honestly, you know, just hit me up and I can make that decision. I can't make any promises on here because I don't want everybody hit me up like, yo, I'm in the ATL area. You know, I'm trying to get into photography, videography. I need some tips. Can you meet up? Like, you know, I don't have the time for that to, you know, do it with everyone. But if you hit me up, you know what I'm saying? And I have the time and, you know, I have the availability, you know, that at least give me you know, some time to see if I'm able to make it happen. So I'm not gonna say no, and I'm not gonna say yeah. Just hit me up. All right, this person has looked like three questions. First one, where did you get your Honda from? Did it cost you an arm and a leg? So for those of you that don't know, that don't follow me consistently, I have two cars. I have an Audi TTS, and I also have a commuter car that I, you know, go to work to, run errands in, things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? So I bought that back in March of last year. Um, it's a 2011 Honda Fit hatchback, you know what I'm saying? And I'm also in the process of making it a more enjoyable car for me to drive on a day to day. Um, so as y'all know, I love cars, you know, so I'm trying to like rebuild it a little bit, add some tune, tune ups here and there, get it looking nice, you know what I'm saying? So I bought it from someone, um, his daughter drove the car to and from college. So it has a lot of highway miles on it. So I was able to get it for like 4,200, I believe. Yeah, so, you know, y'all know Hondas be lasting forever. So I already knew if I wanted a second car and I wanted to be like a daily driver commuter car, I would probably go Honda or Toyota. So, you know, bought that from that person. Decent, you know, dope family, dope dude. I trusted them. So, you know, there hasn't been any issues with the car at all. So, um, but yeah, I would say, you know, if you can just find a private seller, you know, these dealerships, we try to charge you an arm and leg, trying to get a come up, find somebody that, you know, don't drive the car anymore. Really, really looking to sell the car. Second question. Are you still enjoying being a homeowner? Yes, I do enjoy being a homeowner. There's pros and cons to it. You could watch the video that I made about it. But um, one thing that I don't like about home ownership is the fact that anything breaks, anything goes downhill, it's all on you to fix it. It's all on you to find a contractor, or find somebody to fix your plumbing, find somebody to do whatever the case that needs to be done. Like you got to find somebody or you got to do it yourself. So um, it's a lot of do it yourself products, products. <laughs> it's a lot of do it, do it yourself projects that you have to do and then even when you do call people in they don't do things right sometimes third question did you have to submit a request to leadership for the current flex schedule you have at google where you are able to be remote a couple of days a week that's a good question no so at google we are hybrid we are required to be in the office three days a week I work from home on Mondays and Fridays, but I'm required to be in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays in the office in person. So I didn't have to go to leadership about anything. They're pretty flexible too. So if I need to flex it to where I'm in office on a Friday, but I'm working from home on Wednesday because I got to go to an appointment. I got something coming up. You know, we have work from home all week, weeks that we can, you know, take advantage of. So um, very flexible. So it's not something that you know, is, is, is too challenging to get overridden if need be. Um, so yeah, another question, what books have you read to help you become financially successful or any tips regarding being financially fit? That's a great question, man. 
And I'm, I'm going to say I'm at a good place financially, but I'm not where I want to be and aspire to be yet. I'm at a good place from where I used to be, but I'm not where I want to be. I'm where I technically where I need to be in order to, you know, provide for myself, provide the lifestyle that I live. So I'm thankful and I thank God for that. But I'm not where I want to be and aspire to be. So we're going to take a little trip over here to my bookshelf. This is my bookshelf. I got a couple books on here. Um, and this is the book right here that I would recommend if you're trying to think about your finances. This book by Remit Sethi, I think. Yeah, Remit Sethi is a good book. Um, very, very good. But honestly, the main thing that I do to make sure that my finances are intact is not spend as much. I think, you know, we grow up in a culture where you have to spend, spend, spend to show that you got it, to show that you are above your your neighbors and the people around you and you know a lot of people spend not for themselves but for others so I had to get out of that mindset and I had to make sure that I'm spending based on things that I need not always the things that I want I'll get things that I want I can't cap I can't lie but it's not all the time you have to have financial discipline in order to start growing in the financially area and like you said be financially fit what's the funniest date you ever went on <laughs> Funniest date I ever went on. Oh man, I had some funny ones here in Atlanta. I've had some funny ones here in Atlanta. I think the funniest date I ever been on was with a girl that I didn't know dated my friend until I actually invited her on a date. It's hard to explain. My boy talked about her vaguely. It was a short interaction that they had. I didn't remember. Then somehow, months and months later, she hit me up. And then I was like, cool, let's hang out. Let's grab some drinks, you know, something slight. Got there, and as we was talking, things started, you know, moving in my head. She's like, yeah, I do this. I was like, okay, hold on. Such and such was talking to somebody that do this. Yeah, I go, I live on this side of town. Hold on, such and such was talking to somebody that live on that side of town. And then this and that, and I was like, wait, you know, she was like, yeah, we used to talk. I was like, damn. I'm the type of dude where I'm not going, you know, get with a girl my homeboy done talked to and things like that. Like, I would at least like to have the conversation with my homeboys before making that decision. And I didn't. So that was a little awkward. It was funny at the same time because she actually said that she knew that I was the, my homeboy homeboy. She thought, she thought I didn't, I didn't, care. didn't care. I said, nah, I got, to, I got to get the hell up out of here. I got to get the hell up out of here. Somebody said, what are your thoughts on AI? So artificial intelligence. I think AI is dope, man. It's scary because it's starting to take away some jobs. Like it's starting to really, you know, people could just type something in a bar or type something into um, chat GBT and you getting answers, you getting what you need, you don't need to go to somebody like that is crazy. So it's scary, but it's also a lot of potential because it helps save time on your day to day interactions with whatever you have going on. So I think it's a good idea, but at the same time, it's scary. So my thoughts are positive so far, but it's going to start affecting jobs. I can just see it now. Somebody said, have you sold your Audi? I follow Dave Ramsey and like his advice when it comes to big car payments. Yes, I still have my Audi and I follow Dave Ramsey too. And that's probably part of the reason why I'm thinking about selling the Audi too. Because honestly, my Audi sits in my driveway or sit in my garage because I just wait to bring it out on like weekends if I'm going somewhere, date nights, going to meet and, you know, just want to go in the city. You know what I'm saying? If I want to drive fast somewhere, I like the sound like it's a very fun car. So I use it as a fun car. But like driving to work, going to the grocery store, um, running errands like I'm, I'm driving my little Honda Fit, man. I'm not driving my Audi all around town. Um, on, and the wheels is expensive. Atlanta got potholes everywhere. Like it, it's crazy. So I follow Dave Ramsey rule too. And um, that's something that I'm contemplating. And I'm contemplating on selling my Audi and either just keeping my Honda Fit for a couple of years or selling the Audi and just dumbing down my second car into maybe like a Honda Accord or a Toyota Toyota Camry or something like that and um, keep it keep it keep it simple y'all I've been getting into 
Legos lately. Like, I used to be a person that liked puzzles and stuff like that, and I kind of stopped with the puzzles. And, you know, Legos kind of remind me of, like, puzzles, and they also remind me of, like, just things that you can hold and that's, like, that you can feel and build. So, I've been, I've been, you know, getting on this Lego train. So, Lego, if y'all out there, you know, y'all trying to give your boy a sponsorship, you trying to, you know, give your boy a partnership, some brand deals, you know what I'm saying? Hey, send your boy something. But yeah, back to the questions. I got a couple more for you all. Um, would you ever leave the Atlanta area? Why or why not? Um, even though I have a home here and I'm anchored right now, I would leave Atlanta for the right opportunity. If it was an opportunity for career growth, an opportunity to expand creati creatively, if the the bag was right, you know what I'm saying? If it was a great opportunity, um, I will leave, I will leave. I'm not going to anchor myself down to hinder me from opportunities and other ventures that, you know, might not be present here in Atlanta, you know, gotta leave, so. But I love it here, I love it here, I love being here, and I hope all of my opportunities continue to be here so I don't have to move, but I will leave. Brother got to, I ain't, I ain't staying. Get the bag better somewhere else. I said, are you still dating your girlfriend? How is your best friend, the lawyer, doing? Yes, I'm still dating my girlfriend. We're still going good, going well. My best friend, he's doing pretty good. You know, he got his own law firm. Um, he practices primarily in South Carolina. Um, but hey, if y'all need any legal help, any legal advice, um, when it comes to family matters, criminal matter, matters, he, he's a great lawyer. Um, the man don't miss. Um, so yeah, if you ever need a lawyer, hit me up. I'll give you his contact information. So the last question is, do you want children? Do I want children? Yes, yes, I do want children. I want children because I want because I feel like I'm creating these things and these opportunities for myself and, you know, leveling up, not just for myself because it's bigger than me. I'm doing all this for my future family one day. Like, I want to be able to pass things down to my kids. I want to be able to pass land down, buildings, a condo, a car. I want to be able to give my kids something, something that I work for and it's something that they don't have to work for. I also want to pass down, like, some of my skills to my kids, whether it's something to do with, like, picking up a trade. Um, I know photography, I know videography, I know about marketing, I know about branding, I know about YouTube, I know about corporate stuff. So I want to be able to pass down my knowledge and things that I've learned throughout my lifetime um, down to my kids. Um, primarily, I want one kid because it's tough <laughs> as it is already with one kid. Um, but, you know, uh, if a second one come, I wouldn't be... Uh, I wouldn't be mad, you know, um, I, I probably wouldn't plan for two automatically, but if a second one came, I wouldn't be mad. Third one, I'd be like, oh shit, <laughs> oh shit now, because suit like, it's, it's crazy, like kids cause maybe like, they say it's averaging about an additional 20 to 30k a year if you have kids, so, you know, you got to plan for it, and you got to have things in place and in line for your kids to, you know, succeed. And, you know, that's what I want to continue to do and I'm doing. Um, but yes, I, I do want kids, but great question, guys. See, that's why, that's why, that's why I fuck with y'all. Y'all be asking some good questions. But YouTube, that's why I came to ask y'all. So I appreciate y'all for asking me these questions. And, you know, if you have any, you know, other suggestions, whether any other content you want to see from me, whether it's vlogs, whether it's, um, lifestyle video, self-development, simplistic living, minimalism, financial advice, even though I'm not a financial guru, but I can give you tips that I use like, hey, let me know in the comment section. I'm always looking for ways to give you all the best content that I can um, and tap on things that y'all want to hear and from my experiences and from me doing some of these things and learning the long way, the hard way. I don't want y'all to have to learn the hard way either. I can just tell y'all and y'all can like skip some steps to get to where you're trying to go. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate y'all. I'll catch y'all in this video. Peace. Ah, damn. Just hit my knee on it. Let's see. Y'all gotta watch how you end your videos, y'all.